Welcome to part one of what is DoorDash, the truth. How do we as Dashers look at DoorDash? I'm going to share some story time with you guys in the next couple of videos. When you're watching this, this is Friday, but I'm filming it days before. Currently, I'm in northern Michigan with family, enjoying the holiday week, weekend, week, week, when, week or weekend, right? But I wanted to bring this little series to you guys because I am a content creator that talks about DoorDash. I talk about Instacart, Uber Eats, Uber Rideshare, and I make content for either for, for other channels. The Rideshare guy, I talk about things over there. I have people that help collaborate with me and make content for you guys, right? And we talk about a lot of different topics. We talk about our experiences, the relatability. We talk about the good stuff, the bad stuff, mostly what you see on YouTube is negative when it comes to DoorDash or Rideshare or whatever. It's mostly negative. It's mostly somebody in their car because we are alone. They film, they, they get that camera out and they film themselves in the heat of a moment. Something that happened that was bad. You didn't get a tip. You had a bad customer in action. You had a long way to the merchant. You, something happened that was tragic. In that moment, you didn't like it. It was made you so angry and you had to film and record. That's where the content came from on DoorDash in this social media space. It's also on TikTok, Facebook Reels, whatever, Facebook forums, Reddit, people type. It's mostly negative. I want to take these next couple of days or whatever and talk about some positive things. I know in doing that, that these videos won't get a lot of clicks and views because that's how it works. But that's okay. We have to sometimes realize the space that we entered in, what brought us to do this type of work, whether it was a couple years ago, or maybe you're watching this and you're watching this channel for the first time and you just started working today or last week and the algorithm, because my set, my name says DoorDash in the middle, brought you to this channel to learn some information and get some relatable content. I welcome you if you're in there. I know a lot of you guys come every day, but I don't want to give you just the negative all the time even though what we do sometimes can be very negative and it's we're, we're in our cars alone. I think that's why these creative videos that we do, the content creators, I think that's why a lot of people watch because we feel like we can relate because like I said, we're in our car alone and you feel at your worst moments, like you're by yourself and maybe nobody can relate or maybe somebody can relate. I think that's why we have so many content creators out there. Now I'm going to share a little backstory with you guys first. These videos won't be really long and this is part one of four or five. Okay. Stay with me. I came into the gig economy three and a half years ago, I believe. Yeah, three and a half. I've been just making money doing this without a W-2. We do other things, but without a W-2 for two and a half years ago, like exactly two and a half years to the day that you're watching this. But a year before then, I started doing it part time. I had a W-2. I had something I wanted to pay for. And I said, you know what? I used to use Uber rideshare. As a passenger, I said, I could do Uber. I could do Uber. I could do it. I would like, let me try. I want. I got this bill I want to pay for. Let me see if I can get this $5,000. It's almost 5000 Work a few few months after my W-2, a little bit on my day off. Let's, let's get this cash, right? Instantly got hooked. Loved it. I mean, I liked it. The money was good. It was exciting. It was different. I liked meeting people. It was easy. I did ride share. You run into issues, you run into things. That is life. That is work. We call it a job for a reason, right? Anytime you're trading your time for money, you're always going to run into something that isn't favorable. Then I was like, oh, I learned about this DoorDash app. I signed up for DoorDash. I'm doing DoorDash. I'm doing Uber Rideshare. I'm doing Uber Eats, still part time. Started to have conversations with friends and family. I saw other people creating content. Said, hey, I can make some videos, right? I could. I run into funny things. Eh, I can make some videos. I decided to, let me backtrack. Before I started making videos, I decided, hey, I want, it, I want something more out of like life. I'm trying to stick of the nine to five, worked at a casino. Like I was like, I want something more. Like I'm, somebody else is telling me what I'm worth, which is okay. But I was like, eh, I want, I, want to, I want to bet on myself. I said, in the meantime, until I figure out exactly what that is, I could do full-time gig work and make the, make the ends meet. And I can't because I knew my market was good. I knew I could make 200 bucks a day, 150 bucks a day, whatever. And I'll work, learn my market. And I did that. Then I started making content. And you guys know the rest if you've been here since day one. Because I wanted to 
chronicalize my journey being a full-time gig worker, working on other things, and then the vending machines came, and then the YouTube thing came, and then the monetization, and now we're here. I say that because a lot of us look at the gig apps as the worst thing. Horrible company. This is bad. They don't do this. They don't do that. We They take advantage of us. And I can't make any money. I can't do this. I can't do that. Those things might be true for you, and actually many. And while I have negative videos about DoorDash, that has not overall, it's been a positive for me. And I'm making this video in this little series of videos, and there'll be different stories I'll share. This is part one. I want you guys in the comment section, if you can, be vulnerable with me. Share with me some positive things. How have you used the gig economy? I use DoorDash because that's the big one. But it could be any app, any gig hustle, any side hustle. How have you used it? To your benefit and what has it done for you now it starts with you you have to go out there and do it but what has it been able like what has it done for you have been able to pay off debt pay your kids college tuition keep the lights on at a time during a pandemic maybe you got laid off or furloughed these apps are not all bad and you can call me a doordash shill i'll wear my hat okay you could call me whatever you want but i'm being real with you guys the gig economy is mostly positive for most people because I believe most people come to this very part time and they come to it as an opportunity, a quick way when they're in a rut or they're in a financial bind or whatever, and they do it quickly and then they move on. I think most of us that do it full time, those that's where it becomes a little more murky and can become a little more conflicting as far as how it really treats you and how you feel. But I want you guys, full or part-time, share your story down below. How have you been able to use the gig economy as a stepping stone or a bridge or a leaps and bounds, whatever, to get to where you're going, to where you're at now, or where you're going to go in the future? For me, the gig economy has been fantastic. And like anything, like I said in the beginning, a W-2, a job, a job is a job. We're trading time for money, Right. And in part one, I wanted to give you a little bit of that back history and ask you guys a question. I'll be reading all the comments. Put them down below. Give me a positive out of DoorDash or Uber or Lyft or whatever. And I will say this. I'm going to segue into probably what part two will be. I know a lot of us do this work. And English is our second language. If you go to a lot of major cities, if your Uber rides your driver picks you up, if the person delivering your parcel your package, right? A lot of people that do this work are English. It's their second language. I'm first generation. My mother and father were born in Puerto Rico. Their first language was Spanish. We grew up in a household. My grandparents, nothing but Spanish. My parents, Spanish and English. We grew up, it was mostly English in our household. Sp Spanish was sprinkled in when we had like relatives around and things like that, right? So I'm first generation. But I know there are a lot of drivers out there on many of the apps, and they are foreigners to this country. And that's where a lot of people think that those are the workers that are being taken advantage of and maybe don't have all the information or the app's confusing. We'll get into that part two, but I'm going to also put a positive bow on that as well, because not everything's negative about the gig economy. DoorDash is not the worst company ever, and I don't believe they are to blame for most of the things that happen. I think we, and what I try to do in this channel is we got to take personal responsibility. We have to understand what these apps are and use them accordingly. Don't allow them to use you. I haven't done that mostly. And that's why I think I've had a positive experience, right? So you guys tell me in the comments down below what you think, right? But keep it positive. I want to hear some good stories. Be specific. Hey, I did this for six months and I was able to do this and now I do it, you know, maybe on a Saturday if I want to take my wife or my kids out and we don't have the extra money, our budget's tight, but I know I can dash for a couple hours and make maybe 50 bucks and then boom, I can take my kids to go see that new Marvel movie, right? And I don't have to worry about spending money that I have for something else. So then you can trade a little bit of time for a little bit of money and it's quick cash. I want to hear you guys' opinions down below. That's my story, how I came into this. And I'll also leave you with this because I think this will be 
a part in the series. Hannibal's Hungry interviewed me last week. It was a great interview. Go check it out on his channel. It's the State of DoorDash Part 2. There's one and two. Part 2. He asked me at the end of our talk, Pedro, will you be doing this in five years? I gave him an answer, but I'll talk more about that in this little week series that we have going on, probably in the third part. So come back tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are being safe. I hope you're making money. And let me know your comments down below. I know some of you won't like these positive videos, but I think we need to have that sometimes. Because if we're consuming ourselves with too much negativity, that's what you're going to get. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.